have been in our sermon series, The Power of Love. The Power of Love. And I want to go to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and just read for you verses 4 through 7. It says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. <laughs> and it keeps no record of being wronged. It doesn't rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. How many of you are going through some circumstances right now? How many of you feel like lose, uh, giving up and losing hope because you've been going through something for so long? And you're saying, God, what in the world am I going to be do? The title of my message today is Love Is. Love Is. And I'm going to explain to you what love is. And for many of us, love is conditional. We only demonstrate love to others when the conditions all right. We only demonstrate love when someone meets certain criteria. When someone does something the way we feel like that they should do it. Amen. How you treat me is going to determine, this is our mindset, my love for you. Our love for other people sometimes is demonstrated based upon what you can do for me. If you can't do anything for me, I don't love you. The way that God says that I'm supposed to love you. Some of us only demonstrate love when everything is going right in our life. <laughs> Some of us only demonstrate love how, based upon how we're feeling that day. If I got up on the right side of the bed, I'm okay. I'm going to demonstrate love to you today. Some of us fail to demonstrate love because we're still holding on to what you did to me. I'm holding on to what you said to me. I can't let it go. Sometimes, and, and like I said, we only love when the conditions are right. But what I want to talk to you today, maybe I'm going to talk to somebody on the right side of me. Love is more than a feeling. I'm going to talk to you over here. Love is more than a feeling. Love is an action word, and it's always accompanied by giving. Love is giving and the actual process of giving develops the relationship between the person who is giving and the person who is receiving. Let me let me let me say it again. The connection that I have for you is based upon my love. And you receive in my love. So there's a connection that is done and made between us. 1 John 4 and 20. I got to go here. We say we love. But do you really know what love is? 1 John 4 and 20 says, If anyone says, I love God. We lift our hands and say, God, I love you. God, I adore you. And the scripture says, 
You tell God I love you and you hate your brother. God says you're a liar. If you tell me I love you, but I can't stand my brother or sister. It says, for he who does not love his brother whom he can see cannot love God whom he has not seen. So if you don't love your brother who you can see every day. No, I'm sorry. You love God who you can see every day. Or love that you cannot see. Thank you, Pastor Robert. That you cannot see. Then how can you tell me that you love me? How can you demonstrate love to me? When you see me every day. But you love God. I love God. I love God. But you don't demonstrate it. In your life. (laughs) What would our life looked like if we demonstrated the kind of love that Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7. What would it look like if we really understood the definition of love? That's why I want to say love is because I'm going to define to you what the definition of love is. What would it look like if we loved others and gave love and demonstrated love to others the way the Father demonstrates love to us? Think about how we all be walking around with smiles on our face. We all be walking around demonstrating love to others. We all would be creating a relationship between each other because we are loving others others the way that God loves us. Paul wrote 1 Corinthians the 13th chapter verses 1 through 3 1 through uh, 3 through 7. I want you to understand who Paul was and how in the world could Paul define to us who love is when Paul said that I was the chief sinner Of them all. Saul, his first name was Saul. He had a conversion and God struck him in his name and he changed his name to Paul. Paul was a great leader in his time. He was educated. He had great influence. And I didn't realize it, but Paul believed that Jesus was a false God. He was a false Messiah. And he despised anybody, any Christian that loved God, that said, you know what, I'm a Christian. He despised them. And it even said that he was the terrorist of his day. Anybody know about some terrorists? Paul, I, I need you to understand who Paul was. Paul was the terrorist of his day. He was even there when when Stephen was stoned. He was right there looking at Stephen being stoned, and he did nothing to stop it. He was so determined to get rid of everybody that said that I believe God. He was so determined that He was going to eradicate and get rid of Christianity altogether. People were frightened of Paul. They saw Paul coming and they would run and hide. Let me even share with you, Paul would go into people's houses because they said that they were a Christian and he would drag the men and the women out and he would put them in jail. Can you imagine Somebody coming in your house, unannounced, not being welcomed, and drag you out and your entire family and put you in jail just because you believe God? They were innocent. But yet, Paul said, 
He gave us the definition of love. I started thinking, this joker right here, how in the world? You did all that you did, but he had a conversion. He experienced the love of God. But I'm like, Paul, in my mind, I would have said, I don't care what kind of conversion you had. I'm, I'm remembering how you treated people. I'm remembering what you did. I'm remembering how you said something to me. I remember how I had to hide from you. I remember how you drug me out of my house. And now you want to tell me about love? You want to tell me what love is? You want to define to me what love is and how to demonstrate love? What in the world? Y'all know some of y'all would have said, get out my face. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. You ever told somebody because you were mad with them, you told them to get out your face? Or either you didn't tell them, but you were like, you were sitting there listening, and you were like, mm-hmm. Yeah. You were like, uh-huh. Or you would turn your back and walk away. But Paul was telling the Corinthian church about love because they were struggling with their environment. They were struggling because they were around people with corruption and sin. They were struggling with being Christians. Some of them were even falling away because they were adapting to the environment that was around them. Even though they believed and even though they had been converted to Christianity, they now were, were, were struggling with their relationship with God. Anybody ever struggled with their relationship with God? I know all of y'all, you know, y'all cool. Y'all good. Going through situations, but yet you might struggle. God, where are you? Dealing with problems and waiting on God and you're saying, God, where are you? And I need you to understand that the city of Corinth was full of immorality, was full of sexual sin, was full of spiritual immaturity. And I believe that that's what's going on in the church right now. Some of us are spiritual immature. The Bible says that by now you should be eating milk, but meat, but you are drinking milk. A baby eats milk. But a grown person can meet, eat meat and digest it. Not only was Paul uh, 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 addressing the sin that people were committing, but he was also addressing the leaders. He was urging the believers, it's time for you to grow up in your faith. Look at somebody and say, grow up. Look at the next person and say, grow up. He was telling the world, he was telling the Christians, don't blend in with your environment. Stop blending in. And some of us blend in based upon who we're around. Some of us won't say God is good. Some of us won't say I love the Lord. Because we're around somebody that, feel like, that we feel like that, hey, they don't want to hear that. I was listening to uh, Pastor Robert on this week, and Pastor Robert was talking about how um, he was training someone on his job. And he said that the first thing that he said was he said something about the Lord. And the person said, well, I don't believe in all of that. I don't believe in all of that. And he was dealing with them the whole week long. But every time something would happen to the individual that he was training, he was saying, what, Pastor Robert? He said, oh, praise the Lord. Now, at first, he didn't believe all of that. He didn't believe about Jesus. But by the end of the week, he was saying, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Some of us only demonstrate love based upon our environment. Some of us are like chameleons. Anybody ever seen a, 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 a picture of a chameleon? Put the picture up on the screen for me. Some of us are like chameleons. Now, a chameleon changes its color based upon their emotions. Not in, the, not in emotions the way that we do. 
But for instance, if they want to mate, they're going to change their color. That's based upon an affection or how they're feeling. Some of them change their color based upon, I'm getting ready to fight. Some of them change their color based upon submitting. They're submitting to the environment that is around them. My God, that sounds like some of us. Some of them change their color to help in their survival. So in other words, some of us are like chameleons. We don't praise the Lord. We don't mention God because of the environment, and we want to survive even on our jobs. We don't want to let them know that we're Christians. We don't want to let them know that and, and demonstrate the love of God even on our jobs in the community and with other people because that we feel like that that's the only way that we can survive and move forward in life. We are like chameleons. When we get rubbed the wrong way, we change our color. We change the way we demonstrate love. When you have done something to me and I can't forgive you, I'm going to change my attitude. In other words, you're like a chameleon. You're changing. Am I right? We change the way we act. Some of us blend in with whomever and wherever we are. Stop being a chameleon. Don't change who you are. Don't change who you are as a child of God. And it's natural. I'm not knocking anybody, but it's natural for us to want to fit in. We want to fit in. I remember for myself that you know, somebody was doing something or going somewhere, and I was laughing at stuff that I did not even think was funny. But what I was trying to do was fit in with the people that I was around. I was trying to fit in where I did not belong. Anybody tried to fit in, and you know it just did, but you said it, or you did it, or you went along with it because you wanted to go along with the crowd. Let me share something with you. That's peer pressure. And some of us give in to peer pressure. So in other words, we're like a chameleon. We're changing based upon our environment. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. 1 Corinthians provides us a definition of what real love is and how it is supposed to be demonstrated in a believer's life. And I need my phone that's on the back seat over there. The love that we have for God should be demonstrated in our life. We need to set aside our desires and demonstrate the kind of love that God demonstrates to us. And the only way to do that is that the Holy Spirit has to work within us to help us to demonstrate that kind of love. And Paul says that love is useless unless it is demonstrated. Let me say it again. Paul said that love is useless unless it is demonstrated by your actions. Don't believe me? 1 Corinthians 13 and 1 says if I could speak all the languages, I speak in tongues. I raise my hand and, and tell God I love you. Languages of the earth and of angels, but didn't love others. <laughs> this is what Paul said. He said, I would only be a noisy gong. You're making a lot of noise, but saying nothing. And a clanging symbol. Some of us have become a clanging symbol. Some of us. I like that brass symbol. You know, like the symbol you see in the drum cage? You're just beating it, beating it, beating it, beating it, making a lot of noise, <laughs> but ain't doing nothing. Ain't making no noise. How many of you here in here can play the drums? Y'all get on the drums, and y'all think y'all making a joyful noise, and somebody's saying, please be quiet. Please get off them drums. 
The world sees how we demonstrate our love. They see how we come to church. They see how we read the Bible. We see how we say, I'm just blessed to be alive. They see it. They hear it. But they don't see us walking and demonstrating out the love that God is telling us to walk out. And because of that, I believe because we are not demonstrating the kind of love that God says that we need to demonstrate. I believe that that is why some people ain't coming to church. Because they're looking at how you're demonstrating love to them. I believe that some people are not coming to the, the knowledge and giving their life to Christ because they see how nasty we are. Because they see our sharpness of the tongue. They see us rolling our eyes. And so they're saying, I don't, I don't want no part of that. I don't want no part of your Jesus. I don't want no part of what you're speaking about. And I want to let you know that everybody has the freedom of choice. Many of y'all cho chose to come to church today. Many of y'all chose during the worship service to lift your hands. Nobody had to go over and force you to lift your hands. And because we all have a choice, we have a choice of whether we are going to demonstrate the love of God or not. We got to get out of our feelings. We got to stop waiting for the conditions to be right. I want you to understand that when you demonstrate love, it has the power to change people. It has the power to change conditions. It has the power to change the very atmosphere that you're in. It has the power to change someone else's life. When we demonstrate the kind of love that God tells us to demonstrate. It will even change our view towards Christ. It will change it. Some of us say we love God, but it's only lip service. Do you really love God? Do you understand the love that God has for you unconditionally? But some of us only love God when everything is right. But when everything is going wrong or you've been waiting and waiting on God, you're saying you're, 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 you're your God, your love for God begins to diminish. And then you start taking things in your own hand. You say, God, I trust you. God, I'm waiting on you. But God, you're taking too long, so I'm going to do it my way. Amen. God, you didn't give me the answer. I prayed and I asked you for what should I do, but you didn't give me the answer that I wanted to hear. So I'm going to do what I feel like doing. My God. But we have to grasp and truly understand the power of love. We have to truly understand what love is. So I go back to the title of my message, Love Is. Love Is. And I want you to remember that love must be demonstrated. You have to demonstrate it in your life. So let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. And I want the list up there of what love is. Now, the first thing that Paul says is love is patient. How many of, many of us can be impatient? Paul said that love is patient. <laughs> Don't look at nobody else. Look straight ahead and say, God, am I patient? It's the opposite of being short-tempered. It's the opposite of being short-tempered. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. Go back and read the fruit of the Spirit. Love 
is patient. Love bears with certain annoyances. Anybody ever annoy you? <laughs> I know I get annoyed. I know I get annoyed sometimes. I'm like, man, I'm so annoyed. Pastor Robert, he likes to play. And he, he, one thing that he does is he, oh, I don't care what kind of drink that I have. You can take that down. I don't care what kind of drink that I have. He always looks over at me and says, I'm thirsty. I'm like, you got water right over there. Go ahead on and drink that. But he likes my drink. He must like the way that I mix my drink. I mean, every single night he looks over at me and says, I'm thirsty. And so I'm like, you got that. And then I'm like, I'm not giving you none. And then I'll sip it just to irritate him. And then he keeps saying, I'm thirsty. And so what do I do? I got to go over here and give him my drink. But guess what? If he has a drink, he don't want me to drink out of it. But I got to give them mine. Love is patient. It don't get irritated. And I'm only playing because I don't get irritated. I'm like, well, it is what it is. He's been doing it for so long. Just here, here, here it is. Here it goes. It says that love is patient. Love bears with certain annoyances or inconveniences without complaint. You inconvenience, but you, I got to go pick them up this morning. I got to call them this morning. You don't worry about being, it being inconvenience. You don't, you don't say this inconveniences me. And it doesn't lose your temper when provoked. Somebody constantly poking. You know how it says you poke the bear long enough, he going to come get you. No matter how much we get poked, we don't lose our temper, and it steadily perseveres. Then it says, love is kind. Listen to me. Kindness takes the initiative, regardless of how somebody is doing something to you. Amen. Kindness is gentle and mild. Some of us are so rough around the edges. God said, I need to take some sandpaper and, and, and smooth you out. But it says, love is gentle and mild, and it's always ready to show compassion, especially to those in need. The next thing that Paul says, love is not jealous, my God. Love is not jealous. Some people are so jealous over what they can do. They're jealous over their giftedness. They're jealous over their kindness. They're jealous over their talent. Don't be jealous. Just utilize it. Just say, you know what? You got that talent. I may have that talent too, but you may be able to do it better than me. So here, go ahead on and do it. It's not jealous and desires what another person has. Stop coveting what someone else has. Love's not jealous. It's not coveting what another person has. And the particular problem that was going on in Corinth is that they had lesser gifts than others. And so they got angry and they created and they were hating the other believer because they had more gifts than they did. But guess what? Everybody has a different gift. And when they work together, it brings cohesiveness. But when we work in jealousy, it divides and brings about division. It brings about division. When you love someone and you demonstrate love, you say, you know what? We're going to work together. I'm going to put my gift with your gift, and guess what? We're going to be a powerful team. We're going to be a powerful team. And I see that every Monday when we do the food pantry. Let me tell y'all something. One day they put me on the vegetables to organize them. Man, I got over to them vegetables. That won't my anointing. 
nor was it my giftedness. I got over there and started looking at them. And man, when I tell you, I just, I was lost. I experienced so much anxiety. I was so overwhelmed when I saw all of the vegetables and the fruit and what needed to be done. And literally, I was standing there looking at it until somebody said, get out the way, Pastor. I got it. I was like, yeah, I'm moving. I don't have no problem with that. But that's the way we need to be in the church with other believers. We need to sometimes get out of the way and get out of the place where we, where we, we, we have been functioning when somebody else comes in and that's their anointing, that's their talent, that's their giftedness. But yet you say, I shall not be moved. <laughs> you say, I shall not be moved. Am I talking to anybody on, in here on today? Love's not boastful or proud. While some pride can be positive, the kind of pride that Paul is talking about, it takes credit for everything that you do. In other words, you know what? I served the pastor a glass of water. I did such and such. That's pride. Because you are boasting about what you did. And it says, without love, they may feel that by using their gifts, you are doing someone a favor. When I do this, I'm doing you a favor. Anybody did something and you was like, you know what? I did her a favor. I did this because I did it as a favor. You didn't do it as a demonstration of your love for God. You also tell them, you know what? You ought to have been grateful that I did this. <laughs> you ought to be grateful. That I didn't reach up my hand when you talked to me a certain way and slap you. You should be grateful. You should be grateful. That I didn't cut you with my tongue when you talked junk to me. But I said, you know what? I'm going to love you. Anyhow. It says love is not rude. In other words, rudeness is improper for a believer. It's polite. It's not impolite. It's not discourteous. Or you've crude to other people. It doesn't even rejoice or try to humiliate somebody else. Other thing that Paul says is that love do not, does not demand its own way, but yet... It looks out for others and it seeks the best interest and willingly gives up things for their own sake. You know what? I got $10 and I'm going to give you eight of it because I'm looking out for you because you had a need. And I said, you know what? I'll take the two because God's going to give me more. If I learn to open up my hand and give, God's going to fill it back. My God, that's the law of sowing and reaping if you don't believe it. Because you sow what you reap. And God says, if you give generously, I'm going to give back to you generously. Amen. We want to build up people. We want to have an attitude that I'm not going to demand my own way, but I want to build you up. You know, and we even see it in the church sometimes. It's where, you know what, pastor didn't let me do what I wanted to do, so I'm going to go to him and tell him or tell her that, you know what, I feel like I need to be doing this. I feel like we should be doing it this way. That's demanding your own way. We shouldn't be demanding our way. Should not be demanding our way with other people. Love's not irritable. Some of us wake up in the morning and my God, it's like you've been sucking on lemons. <laughs> I know nobody in here is not like that. But even irritability can come through our actions. And the way you act or the way that you don't interact is irritable. It's showing, look, don't bother me today. 
We can look on people's faces and say, "Uh uh-oh, it's not a good day for them. That's being irritable. It's being irritable. You know what? You got on my last nerve. You know what you do to me? You get on my last nerve. That's being irritable. But Paul says love is not irritable. It ain't easily angered. And I want you to understand that the way that we demonstrate love is the same way that somebody else is going to demonstrate love to us. And this is, this is where it really gets good. Love is and love keeps no record of wrong when it has been uh, 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 wronged. When you've been wrong, how many times you, you may have gone on, but in your mind, you're still holding on to that. In your mind and in your actions, you're, you're, you're saying, you know what? Deep down within me, I still remember what you said to me. Deep down within me, I still remember how you treated me. Deep down inside, you're saying, you know, I remember when I asked you for a favor and you told me no. Don't keep a record of wrongs. Some of us need to hit the erase button or the delete button. Go back. Everything that's been written on the page, go back and highlight it all and delete it. We got to say, God, delete everything that I'm holding on to against this person. Delete everything that they ever did to me. God, help me to demonstrate your love and hold no record of wrong against someone. Let me share something with you. When you hold a wrong, when you fail to demonstrate forgiveness, when you fail to let something go against somebody else, you're not, you are holding yourself in prison and you're also holding that person in prison. Because you're saying, you know what, I'm not going to treat you the way you treat me. Like they said, I'm going to treat you. You treat me bad, I'm going to treat you bad. That's because we're holding on. But yet, when it says that love is and love uh, uh, keeps no record of wrong, it makes allowances for people's failures. It makes allowances for what people does. It makes allowances for people to make mistakes. But yet we want, to, we want people to understand us when we make a mistake. We want somebody to forgive us, but it doesn't allow for somebody else to make a mistake. It doesn't allow us, and, and we're not make allowances for them. Sometimes we deal with somebody who is spiritually immature, and so we're feeling like, you know what? Uh, 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 you ought to be, you coming to church, you doing this, you praying, But they still got some flaws. But we don't make allowances for their flaws. When we make allowances for other people's flaws, it frees the other person up and allows them to grow. It allows them to grow, but not only them to grow, but to grow the relationship between you and them. To grow in the body of Christ. And I got two more. I'm sorry, I got more than two more. He says, love never gives up. Love never gives up, but is willing to protect others. And the word love and never giving up is actually means that I'm going to cover you. I'm going to hide you By covering. It doesn't refer to hurtful things that people have done for you, done to you, but it's protecting someone through prayer. It's protecting someone saying, God, move in their heart. God, change their heart. Holy Spirit. You know, I've experienced that sometimes. Somebody would say something to me and it would really hurt me. It would bother me. But my demonstration of love towards them would say, Holy Spirit, by the time they see me the next time, let their attitude be different towards me. 
Let how they treat me be different. Love never gives up. Love doesn't gossip about somebody. We gossiping, calling people on the phone, girl, let me tell you something. And this is how we do it. Um, uh, well, men don't do it so much, but, but ladies do. We say, girl, I need you to pray for such and such. Well, what's going on in their life? And then we begin to tell them everything. That's gossiping. You know, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just so that they can agree with us, agreement with me and pray and what they're going through. Just say they're going through something and pray for them. Stop gossiping about what somebody else is doing or somebody else is acting or what somebody else is. We know a lot of things about people, but we ain't going behind the scenes and gossiping about it. We ain't going behind the scenes and telling somebody nobody in here is doing that. I, I just know. Ain't nobody doing that. And somebody shook their head and said, oh, really? <laughs> Look, I ain't talking about nobody in here. I'm almost done. It says, love never loses faith. You always want the best for somebody else. It never loses faith. And it's trusting of everyone. Even if they don't deserve your trust, you're saying, you know what? I'm willing to trust you. You hurt me and I put my trust in you. But you know what? Because the love of God is being developed in me. I'm maturing as a believer. I'm growing up. I'm going to trust you that you ain't going to do that again to me. You ain't going to say that again to me. Love gives somebody the benefit of the doubt. Anybody not giving somebody the benefit of the doubt? Oh, yeah. I know I have. And we can deal with conflict with other people in a loving way. That's what faith produces in us. That's what love is. We can deal lovingly with someone. And I got to move. This is my last one, I promise you. And we can, we can start the music. It says, love endures through every circumstance. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the circumstances is in your life, you can endure it. I want you to know through the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to make it through. I want you to know through the power of the Holy Spirit, it's going to be all right. I want you to know through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the love that's being developed inside of you, you're saying, I can endure this. That is the demonstration of love. When you face persecution, you don't walk around and say, I'm going through the day. Y'all ever been around somebody? What's, you okay? No, I got this problem. No, you know, I'm good, though. But your face and the way you're demonstrating, the way you're acting is saying, I can't endure the circumstance that I'm going through. Despite the setbacks that I've had, despite everything that I've gone through, despite what I'm dealing with, I can't demonstrate love. But love is to be demonstrated. It's not just to be said out of our mouth that I love God and I love you. As I said before, how can you love a God who you cannot see, but you cannot love someone that you see and you're around and you talk to every day? Church, it's time for us to come together and demonstrate love. Let's stop talking about it. Let's grow up in our faith. Let's grow up in our relationship with God. Let's grow up and stop being babes in Christ and begin to demonstrate love despite, Lord, what tomorrow may bring. I'm not going to be fearful, but God, I realize that I am going to make it through. Anybody ever been through some situations that you did not think that you were going to make it through and you made it through it? 
Some of us need to ask God to write a new chapter in my life. Help me, God, for my love not to be conditional but be unconditional. Help me, God, through the power of your Holy Spirit to demonstrate the kind of love that God has towards me. Help me, God, to get rid of my sharp tongue because I'm not demonstrating the love that you tell me to demonstrate. Help me to get rid of my attitude. Help me to get rid of my somber attitude when I'm going through things. But God, help me to demonstrate what love is. So I need y'all on this week to go back and read 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And the definition of love is a have or agape. It means that it love without conditions. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not rude. Love never gives up. Love endures. Love doesn't keep a record because you did bad to me. I'm not irritable because I'm demonstrating the love of God. I'm not demanding my own way because I'm demonstrating your love for me, God.